Good morning and welcome to Chase Family Church Studios. Uh, we're online this morning and it's great to have you with us. My name is Martin Higgins. I'm the leader of the church and Pete and Sue's Tidy. Good to have them again with me hosting today. For those of you who were here two weeks ago will remember we had a tough week when the computer equipment went wrong and we were left live doing some strange things. But hopefully today we're a bit calmer, chaps, so we can uh, uh, work into that. Pete, do you want to kick off with some things to say as well? Yes, thank you, Martin. Yeah, we're hopeful for uh, a better week this week. Uh, it's yeah. great to be with you all uh, once again. We're meeting on Facebook Live um, during this uh, lockdown period. Hope you enjoy your time with us today. Great to see lots of people signing in mm. um, from uh, parts of the UK. Uh, Tim Huddleston in Germany, Selena from Germany as well. Uh, so really good that you can join with us and hope yeah. we have a wonderful time together this morning. And if you're watching with us for the uh, first time today, you're really welcome. Mm. Great to have you with us. And um, we hope you really enjoy your time with us today. And we hope that you feel encouraged um, by the time that you spend with us, that you feel strengthened in the Lord. We've got a brilliant service lined up, loads of stuff going on. Um, so we're praying for you today and we, we pray that you will be strengthened and encouraged in your time with us. We should say hello to a few people. I just see uh, Andy Coleman. Good to see you join us there this morning. Look forward to uh, seeing you with us again sometime. And uh, Hamid, good this morning to you. And Renarete, I don't know if you've got any other names you've Dead been there. Dev Hartman, good oh, yeah. to see you this morning. Great ah, to be Nick with Garten, you. Nick Garton, you're back again. Good. Great to have um, Korea and um, yeah. Martin and Jackie Mannion yeah. tuned in. Good to have you with us. And Nikki Batson, good morning, Nikki. Good to have you. And AJ, for those of you who don't know, AJ, Anthony J. Haynes, lovely to see you there this morning. Got any others? Loads of people signing at uh, uh, Anne Voisey, Wall, Terry yeah. Walker. Oh, brilliant. Uh, really great. There's, we're, yeah. we're trying to keep up with uh, on our phones. So if you see us on our phones, we're not <laughs> yeah, just playing yeah. Angry Birds. We are just trying to keep up with the comments. <laughs> Angry Birds, that's a bit of an old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Retro game. Alice, Alice Walker. Good. Oh, good. Alice. Hi, Alice. Yeah. Nice to see you this morning. Good to see you. <laughs> Helen, great to see you. Yeah. Oh, we've got Saintly Swan from Winchmore Hill. <laughs> He's just, he and his wife have just arrived. <laughs> your daughter's just messaged. Are you going to say hello to your Oh, hello, family? Rebecca. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I did see. Yeah, yeah, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Can't see my wife yet, though. I'm a bit worried about Oh, my mum's just tuned in. Hi, mum. Oh, hi, mum. Yeah, the sort of thing you want to do on television is say hello, mum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, morning, Derek. Yeah, good to see you down here as well on the name. Well done. Good. Loads of people signing in. Really good. We will try and keep up with people joining and the comments. Mm. And on the subject of comments today, we've got another poll for you. I yes. uh, hope you've been enjoying the polls over the last few weeks. Just a bit of fun for us. Helps us to get to know each other as a church. And you might have worked out by the sign that's on the table there that the topic this week is chocolate or crisps. So, um, nice and healthy. Uh, Where do you stand? Where do you stand? Uh, I, I, I'm crisps, I think. Oh, I, I, dearie, what, what, really? what about you? I've got a real sweet tooth, so I'm chocolate. Yeah, me, yeah. me too, I'm afraid. Yeah. It's definitely chocolate, those of you who know me. Yeah, uh, Liz, I think Liz wishes it was something else, but then she likes crisps and chocolate, so yeah. I don't know what she's going to put down. And you can't put both if you're polling, <laughs> no, because we are, we are logging the responses, and we will yeah. come back to it we later on. We have two for people for chocolate and nobody for crisps, so there you go. Yeah. yeah. So please do get involved. Let us know what's your preference. We will not be accepting both, uh, but do let us know <laughs> what your choice is, and we'll revisit that later on in yes, the service. Yes, Anna, chocolate. One, <laughs> one vote for chocolate from Anna. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. That's <laughs> brilliant. Um, so we're really looking forward to um, the message that's coming today. I mm. hope you've been reading Colossians uh, with us. Um, Carl is going to be speaking uh, to us today. Um, he's going to be looking at chapter two of Colossians. And the, the title today is Built Up in Christ. So we're really looking forward to that. Uh, after the live service, uh, we're going to have another time to meet together on Zoom. Uh, afterwards, some of you have uh, been able to join us the last few weeks. I do encourage you uh, yeah. to log on afterwards. It's a really good opportunity for us to discuss the sermon, but also spend some time praying together. Yeah. Uh, we know that the lockdown has been eased slightly um, since we, we last met, but we can't meet as we would normally. So it's really important for us to gather together, have a bit of fellowship and pray together on Zoom. So uh, that will be after service. The, it will be the regular um, login details, but it will come up on the screen afterwards uh, at the end of the service as well. 
Uh, this morning, we want to have a time focusing on the Lord Jesus as we worship. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pray together and I encourage you to join uh, where you are in your living rooms. Let's join together in spirit mm-hmm. as right. we seek the kingdom of God and as we look to lift up the name <clears throat> of Jesus this morning. So we're going to pray. Before you pray, Pete, um, I just um, share that in my own quiet time this morning when I was praying, Um, I felt as if somebody might have a pain in their arm, whether they hurt it or damaged it, but um, I felt the Lord was pointing me to an arm. If that's you this morning, um, I would like to pray just now for that. So just, I know you're going to pray about other things, but Lord, I want to pray that that's not an um, an idle word. It's, It's a word of knowledge that you gave me for someone who's struggling. So Father, I pray for that arm. Um, that right now it would be healed in the name of Jesus. And it says that it's by your stripes we're healed, so we declare that over that person's arm right now. If that's you, receive that prayer. Perhaps you, if it's not you, then, um, you know, just embrace the prayer anyway. But, uh, right, Pete, can carry on, please do. Pray. Amen to that. And Lord Jesus, we mm. thank you that you are Lord of all. We thank you, Lord, that you're in control. We thank you that you love us. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can gather together this way yes. this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you dwell in us by your spirit. Mm. And that, Lord, you're always with us. You'll never mm. leave us. You'll never forsake us. So, Lord Jesus, we lift up your name this morning. We declare that you are King of kings, that you are Lord of lords. And, Lord, we ask that your presence will be with us yeah. this morning as we sing worship Jesus, songs, as we sing Lord praises Lord. to your name that we will be encouraged and we'll be lifted up in our spirits because you are Lord of our lives. We bless your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a time of worship now and we're going to hear Anna's going to lead us in a traditional song, Father God, I Wonder. Without the knowledge of your fatherhood and your loving care But now I am your son, I am adopted in your family And I can never be alone Cause Father God, you're there beside me I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises I will sing your praises forevermore I will sing your praises I will sing your praises I will sing your praises forever Without the knowledge of your fatherhood and your loving care But now I am your son, I am adopted in your family And I can never be alone Cause Father God, you're there beside me I will sing your praises, I will Sing your praises, I will Sing your praises forevermore Well, that's wonderful to be singing uh, an old chorus like that, which carries so much weight. We thank you, Father God, that you're there for us. But um, just want to give you an update on the poll. Um, Chocolate is leaping ahead uh, with 12 and crisps is down to six. Uh, So come on, if you're a crisp person, get your votes in. Um, 
And also, a uh, big shout out to, for Dennis Ward. Apparently, it's his birthday. He's three, did I hear you say? Three today. Three yeah. today. Happy Fantastic. Birthday, so, Dennis. happy birthday, Dennis. Um, we're now going to uh, read uh, Psalm 91. And again, as, as we've often said, you know, take this scripture and declare it over your household. Suze is going to read it to us now. Okay, this is Psalm 91. Those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress, our God. In him we will trust. Surely he shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover us with his feathers and under his wings we shall take refuge. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord, who is our refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place. No evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling. For he shall give us, angel, give us his angels charge over us, to keep us in all our ways. In their hands they shall bear us up, lest we dash our feet against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent we shall trample underfoot. Because we have set our love upon him, therefore he will deliver us. He will set us on high because we have known his name. We shall call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver and honour us. With long life he will satisfy us and show us his salvation. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm just reminded of a <coughs> young man who worked for me some years ago when I had an office uh, business. Um, and he was struggling um, for all sorts of reasons, pressure, don't need to go into the detail. But um, I got him to ring one of the intercessors I know, and he just declared this scripture. And when it got to the end, just those last few verses, it was as if he changed completely. Uh, mm. Richard just completely got it. And he knew he was set free and he was protected. There is so much in that wonderful psalm. We're going to pray. And I'd like you to be with me in this. And uh, there you are in your home, in your place of comfort. But there are many people around this world that are going through all sorts of traumas, and not just to do with COVID, but other things as well. So let's draw our thoughts together as we pray, shall we? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we start by saying how much we love you. You are amazing, Lord. You gave us Jesus, your Son, your one and only Son, that we might have life eternal. And through his death and resurrection on the cross, we are set free. And we thank you, Lord, that you didn't even leave it there. You gave us your Holy Spirit. And so I ask you, Holy Spirit, to lead us in our prayers and our intercessions this morning. We do lift up our government to you this time <clears throat> and all the governments around this world. We pray for our Prime Minister and the Cabinet as they lead us into what this very difficult time is now coming to an end, Lord. We want to pray that as we look to the future to come out of this, that we would do what you want us to do. We ask that the plans of this nation will be put before you. Our scripture tells us that if we commit our plans to you, you will cause, us, cause them to succeed. And you say that in Proverbs. And although the men in power, men and women in power don't necessarily know this, we do. And so, Father, I'm asking that you would help them with their plans, that those that know you as Lord and Saviour would uh, hear your voice and be able to bring in divine wisdom. And Lord, we pray for those who've lost fa uh, family members and friends. Lord, the pain that they have had, and even going through it this time, perhaps not even knowing, Lord, I pray that you will be the comfort that you promised to be. That they will pray, they will call on the name of the Lord. And they will be saved. Lord Jesus, 
We thank you that you are the comforter by your spirit. Will you be the comforter today? We thank you that you are giving us life. Every day we wake up and we have life before us. Your mercies are new every morning. Lord, as we look to you, we give you thanks for the goodness of God. And as we go through this day, we particularly remember it's a day where we as a church meet together and we lift up your name. We worship the name of Jesus. So, Lord, as we do that, will our hearts be filled with the joy of the Lord? We pray, Lord, that the joy of your salvation would revisit us today with an excitement. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, and the presence of God to be with us today. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I don't know where you are today and what's going on in your life, but just encourage you to just wait on the Lord for a moment. And those of you that in families can pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues, just do it for a moment. Let's just pray together in the Spirit. I encourage Pete and Sue to do that with me just for a moment. You are wonderful, Lord. You are indeed mighty, mighty God. Praise you. Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Father, for your goodness to us. Lord, as we come into a time of worship now, may our hearts and our minds be attuned with you. Let the presence of God be in every house that's linked in here this morning. May they be that anointing, that thin place above us each, where we experience your presence now as we worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. It's so good to be with you all today. I hope you're well. Let's come together. I'm going to just really worship now. I'm going to read a few verses from Psalm 139. Um, it says, Lord, you have examined my heart. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down, when I stand up. You know my thoughts, even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me. Jesus, your presence follows us. We cannot escape it. Even when we go down to that darkest place, you're with us. So we welcome you here this morning, Lord. We say thank you. Thank you for your presence here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just settle your heart this morning before the Lord. between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory 
glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my see him he is there even if you can't feel him he's there he's there Jesus. thank you for your presence with us Jesus. thank you this time and always you never leave us and you never forsake us that's what your word says we can cling to that promise we stand on the rock that is higher than I we stand on your word we stand on Jesus.
allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you this morning. Allow God to speak into your life. He is the exalted one. Wow, what a wonderful time of worship. And we were all... Can I butt in? I yeah, go on. I say something. Everybody will know that King of Kings is my favourite chorus, but I didn't request it. That was Anna's request, right? <laughs> However, we really enjoyed worshipping here. We were all worshipping <laughs> here in the studio. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, so we just want to give a few quick notices uh, before we move on. So... Um, a bunch of us have been doing a course called Loud and Clear on a Monday afternoon. And if that's you, just a reminder, that's two o'clock tomorrow on Zoom. It's the same login details as before. And it's been going really well. We're coming into our third week and we've been looking at how to prepare and write and deliver great talks. And this week it's all going to be about body language. 
Um, but it's been a really good time together. Mm. You've joined in I did, a few yeah. of them. So, yeah, um, yeah we've good. been enjoying that. There's um, about uh, 10 of us, I think, that are yeah. doing the course. Good. Um, and we're going to be looking at other courses to do in the future as well um, as part of the encounter year out. Um, but we'll invite other people to join us. So our encounter team have been doing mm. this course as well. And it's been great to have that time together. And actually, Monday afternoons are our usual time of training for the team. So it's been great to put that back in. Um, yeah, and so yeah. we've been enjoying that. Um, Martin. Okay, and uh, parenting. Um, those of you who are doing the parenting course, um, a couple of weeks ago we had a, a social, which I've never had online, but it worked really good. Well, I'm hoping we'll develop that on Tuesday. Um, and it's at 8 o'clock, I'm just checking my details. And this week we're going to start by looking at teaching healthy relationships. So all of those who are involved in that, um, the online details will be coming out in the next uh, couple of days. See you then. On uh, Wednesday evenings, uh, some of you will know that we are doing a weekly prayer meeting on Zoom. So on 8 o'clock Wednesday evening, I'd encourage you to join. We will put the details out uh, on the private group um, if you haven't got them already. But um, there's so much to pray about at the moment. While it looks like in the news that we hope that we're over the worst of things, there's so much that we still need to pray about. You know, um, the world around us is struggling, is broken, and it needs Jesus. So um, do come and join uh, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, if you can. Do you have a quick check of our poll? Oh, yes. Yeah, where are we at? Oh, goodness me. Chocolate's still in the lead. 14. Crisps are coming up with eight. So um, we'll keep you posted on that one. If you haven't got your vote in, uh, those of you who come online and maybe can't quite see it, we're having a vote today as to whether you prefer chocolate or crisps. So all you need to do is type in which is your preference and it will be uh, monitored. We have had people specifying which chocolate, nor chocolate biscuits, <laughs> chocolate cake. Yes. Um, so that's been quite fun. Um, we're really excited now because we're um, going to have uh, a quick chat with Pippa. Um, so Pippa is one of our children's workers here. She mm. leads on a Sunday morning. She also leads Springers, which is um, the mums and tots group that meets here every week, although not at the moment, but she's um, been great at leading that. And uh, she's going to share a bit with us about um, what she's been up to during lockdown. So Pippa, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Hi, Pippa. Wonderful. Hi, Hi Pippa. Good to see you. How are you. How are you managing in lockdown? How's it been going? Okay, but I must say, both chocolate and crisps have helped very, very much. Yeah, yeah. So Excellent. Which is your favourite, though? Come on, which is your favourite? Pardon? Which is your favourite, crisps or chocolate? Now, I did think very carefully about it. Controversial. I can leave a bit of chocolate sometimes. <gasps> no. Sometimes. You get delivered for things like that. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. <laughs> but a big bag of um, mainly probably something like black pepper crisps, mm. all gone. Good choice. Oh, yeah, Good yeah. choice. Oh, so I think what? crisps. I'm really hungry now while yeah. <laughs> we're talking about this. Um, anyway, Pippa, it's great shall to I, have you with I us this morning. Shall I send them down the line? Do you want yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pippa, it's really good to have you with us this morning. Um, could you just share with us what you've been doing for the, for the children in lockdown? Just share with us some of the, the creative things that you've been doing. Yes. Yeah, it's been really exciting, actually. A very, very new thing. Um, we're always looking for new ways of doing um, kids' church. And this has definitely been an opportunity to do that. Um, what we've been doing since the beginning of lockdown is we've been producing every week a resource for families, really simple with um, worship ideas, creative worship ideas, with um, creative ways of um, making um, playing, all sorts of things, just using what you've got at home, um, but all on a key theme. So each week has been different. We've had, right at the beginning, we looked at um, don't worry, what does the Bible say about that? Um, 
we looked at praying what did jesus say about praying why should we do it what is it um and most recently we're starting a series on um b um looking at what god asked us to be last week we um um focused on be fruitful so we looked at the fruits of the spirit um so just so you get an idea of where we how we do things um that doesn't mean we just sit and read and do that we don't do that in launchpad by the way shout out launchpad kids miss you um and sunshine kids and daybreak um and um so there was lots of opportunities with be fruitful you could make fruit cocktails you could do a big poster which has all the fruits of the spirit on it all sorts of different ways of doing it we've produced it like an easy printable version that if you can either look at on your um device or on your you can print it off to use and we've had all sorts of different things i don't know whether you can see scavenger hunts um, print offs and and every week there's been a coloring sheet that we've encouraged people to color and share and encourage your family as well as your neighborhood so sometimes we can put things up in the window so a couple of weeks ago um, we looked at hope there's so many beautiful rainbows around at the moment and um, which is lovely to see but what does the bible say about what a rainbow means it means hope and it's god's hope for us so um one of the things we did was to produce a coloring sheet <laughs> that's brilliant try not to cover <laughs> try not to cover my head that was toby's by the way um and it's been great because we put them up in our window so that everybody walking past can see that rainbow and can see hope in big letters with the bible verse underneath what a brilliant so idea to, that's brilliant we're, we're trying to we're trying to find ways that being together at home is fun but we can also still be part of our community we can be part of sharing jesus to the world around us absolutely so that's really great thank you for doing it uh, Carl saying how much they've appreciated it with Esther's love doing it. Um, one of the notes that come in. Sorry, I cut across what you That's you're okay. No, that's all right. Um, so what's what's this week's then? What's the theme this week? Okay. okay. This week we are looking at the theme Be Bold. We're going to focus on um, the story of Esther because to me, Esther was a really good example of being bold because she wasn't loud about it. She wasn't forced about it. She wasn't kind of bullyish about it. When God told her she needed to do something, she was confident enough to know that God was saying it to her and to follow it through. In fact, if she had gone talking to the king in a big, loud, brash way, I think it would have been a very, very different story. But she was wise. She stopped. She was confident in what God had told her to do. And she was bold and spoke boldly. So, so that's, that's that's the theme for this week. We've got... Um, building towers i'm trying to remember some of the things we've got making loud hailers so sometimes you do need to be loud to be bold um i'm trying to think what else we've got we've got making shakers out of um jars and um rice and stuff inside and all that kind of thing great oh brilliant that sounds excellent um so in a couple of weeks' time, we've got a family service mm. that we're going to be broadcasting on. It's on the 31st of May. And Pippa, you're going to be involved in that. Can you tell us a little bit about um, some of the plans that we've got? Yes, come on. 
Okay. I think it's going to be a really fun time because this is a chance for us to be different. Um, church is doesn't ever, ever need to be boring because when we get two or three of us together with different personalities, different way of doing things, then we will have fun together. So this is going to be a really good time. So the 31st of May, all together service. Um, will there be mess? Uh, yes. Um, will there be um, explosions? Um, maybe. Um, Hopefully not of our equipment. No. Oh, we'll work on that one. Um, will there be Bible truth? Yes. Definitely. Um, hopefully be, they're going to be a lot of fun, lots of different ways of um, expressing um, God's truth. Mm. And how can people take part? You were telling me earlier before we started about um, people sending in photos. Right. What, what we really want to do, partly from what we're doing this week, is one of the things on my heart for the... the um, family stuff every week is that we're always engaging with our community we're not stuck in our house um we are still church in our own little bubble and we can be jesus to our community um so the challenge that i want us to do and that's everybody that's not just families that's individuals um is to do one bold thing with my beautiful computer visual aid obviously coming across <laughs> smooth. yeah very smooth very smooth yeah I like it yeah yeah um, so one bold thing this week um that could be writing um an encouragement note to someone down the street it could be um I don't know, I know clearing, clearing up, up after the, the bin men, men have made a mess down the street. Um, um, it could it be drawing, drawing a Bible verse and putting it in your, your um, window, window so, so everyone can pass can see. see. Any, Any kind, kind of way, way that you can, can be, be um, Jesus to your community Jesus in, a, in, in even a tiny, tiny way. That could be sending someone a message and checking they're okay. But think about creative ways you can do this. What we'd, what we'd love, love is that, that you, you take, take a picture, picture of it and you and send, send it either to myself by email or private message or to Sue, or, or you could you post, post it on the um, Chase Family Church Family and Friends page. So that's one bold thing. We're not asking for a massive, massive thing, but one small action where you are making a difference. Um, Brilliant. And it would be lovely to have as many as we can so that we can share them together to encourage each other. It's not about showing off, it's about no. encouraging each other. No, Absolutely, that sounds brilliant. Right, one bold thing I'm going to have. Pippa, I really want to thank you for, yeah, that's it. Now, one thing, one very bold thing. Thank you for being with us today. Just one last question. Um, is your hair really strawberry colour or is it just the screen on it? <laughs> I can yeah. confirm, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, do, do I ask how that happened or uh, was it purposeful? <laughs> <laughs> These things happen in lockdown. Yeah, strangely. absolutely. <laughs> Moment of weakness or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time with us this morning. Really great. Yeah, and uh, we'll look forward to some of those things that will come and be part of what we're doing over the next couple of weeks. We're going to look to bring some of this in on a regular basis. <laughs> Um, for uh, the church because we are a family church and we want to bring family things in and now we seem to be getting into the routine of what's expected we want to draw some of those things into the service so look out for that and uh, Pippa's going to be doing some more over the next few weeks we're now going to be blessed um, with something slightly different some of you may have seen the blessing being um, sung by a lot of worship leaders around the country different denominations and there's a it's gone uh, viral and even the I think the Prime Minister liked it because it went over two million, so he wants to get uh, his approval in that sense, which is good. Um, and I'm just checking with uh, Stuart. Are we okay? We've got something slightly different here. It's a blessing, but it's by the children.
Wasn't that great? I found that very moving. I see some of the children enjoying the worship and praising God in their, their own way, and I think that's so, so precious. Um, we've come to the time in our service this morning where we're going to have our message, and Carl is going to bring us the message, continuing on from Colossians, looking at chapter 2. So I hope you've been reading it, and uh, today's message is called Built Up in Christ. Good morning, Good morning church. church. Um, welcome to the third part of Colossians Confidential. If you haven't already caught up on the first two or seen them, then they're available on the, the Chase Family Church YouTube channel, and I recommend you go and watch those. This morning, we're going to uh, look at chapter two and what it is to be built up in Christ. Uh, and the points I'd like us to consider as we do that are how we're built up in Christ and what true wisdom is. Uh, recognizing and rejecting false philosophy, understanding that we are alive in Christ, and knowing that we are now free from the law. So I'm going to read uh, the passage uh, up to about verse 15. I'm going to read that now. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea, and for all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine sounding arguments. For Though I am absent from you in body, I, present, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you received Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on the human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of the le our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So, First point, how are we built up in Christ? So to start with, Paul is, is, is expressing how he's contending to present all believers fully mature in Christ by teaching them in all wisdom. He wants the Colossians to fully understand and know the mystery of God, which is, as we've seen, is Christ in us, the hope of glory. He sought for the Colossian church to have a complete understanding as a, the mystery and so they may not be deceived by the fine-sounding arguments presented by the false teachers, and that they'd be united in love together as a community against these heresies. The arguments are deceptive in that they don't deny necessarily Christ's importance, but seek to merely relegate him as one of many ways to get to God and be spiritually complete. The Gnostics taught that to get to be complete, you'd have to go through spiritual beings to get to God. They didn't believe that Jesus was the only way. They, they said it was one of many. This is obviously not in line with the truth and not in line with the gospel presented uh, by Paul to Epaphras, and which he passed on to the Colossian church. It was a dangerous teaching that needed to be addressed. Paul's use of language is deliberate. As the Gnostics uh, were very keen about their pursuit of higher knowledge and secrets and mysteries, Paul, I think, is deliberate when he refers to that mystery of God, um, where Jew and Gentile can be full, have the fullness of God. Um, anyone can have it as if they believe. And, and states that all wisdom and knowledge are in Christ, the very things that Gnostics are after. 
Paul goes on to encourage the Colossian church to continue in the faith, uh, to, as walking by faith, not by sight, living their lives in Christ, who they received by faith when they believed the gospel. Another way of putting it is, so as you learned who Christ is at the, in the beginning, continue on that basis. And Paul explains this in a number of ways going forward. Firstly, he talks about how the believers should be rooted. And unlike a tree or a plant is rooted in soil from which it draws up nourishment and nutrients for it to grow. And those roots also provide the stability and strength to prevent the, the, the tree from or plant from falling over or whatever like that. Um, we are to be rooted in the truth in Christ. We have been planted into him, drawing up our nourishment from him. Plants need to be in soil to grow. And God will cause us to grow if we are in the right soil. False teachings want us to be uprooted and replanted in a different kind of soil, but we won't be nourished in the same way. Stay true to the gospel. You do not need any more than Christ. Christ is all sufficient and he is all we need. We don't need to add anything to Christ. We just need more of Christ. Pursue that deeper, fuller understanding of the truth in Christ. Develop your prayer time of prayer. Get into your Bible. Study the word. Live it out. Worship the Father. Paul then talks about being built up. When the Colossians believed in Jesus, a foundation was laid in their lives on which uh, will be, they will be built up, fitted together into a holy temple of God with other believers, as Ephesians 2 tells us. We're the same. When we believed, a foundation was laid in our lives and a building project was commenced. Now, construction projects um, take time. I work in construction and uh, from time to time I, I go to site and sometimes I go there, it's, it's a hole in the ground um, and that's it. And then I go back a, in a couple of weeks' time and nothing really appears to have changed. Yet if I go back in six months or a year's time, you can start to see that progress. The, the frame may be erected or the roof may have been installed. It's slow and steady. And we're the same way. Now, there may be times where nothing really seems to be happening. You know, we've been a Christian. We're, we're trying to do the right thing. We're, we're following God. Yet we kind of we seem stuck. Nothing's really progressing or moving. But that's not the case. Because like a construction project, our progress can be slow and steady. It may be little changes to our heart attitudes, maybe the way we, we relate to colleagues at work or even speak to our families. It may be having like a moment where we, we recognize something in our character or in our lives that isn't right and, God, and, and isn't in line with God's standards and we, we seek to work on that. It could be the fact that actually we don't see the changes but those around us can recognize it in us and see that there's a real change going on in our lives. Slow and steady, we are gradually being built up into a long-lasting, durable work that will pass the test when the time comes. Paul then says about, talks about being strengthened in the faith as, as you were taught. Epaphras brought Paul's gospel from Ephesus back to Colossae and taught the believers there the true faith. Now Paul praises the Colossian church for their discipline. They are firm in their faith in Christ. They are established. Are we established in our faith? It's important to know and understand what we believe. I'd like to share a story of a friend of mine who, some time ago now, um, she went to a, a Christian camp uh, with her dad. And there was a particular talk on about parents and, and children, like the relationship between the two. Perhaps it was one of those ministry meetings to kind of work through things. And the father fully expected my friend to go to this meeting, uh, but she didn't. And uh, he asked her why, and she said, Dad, I don't, I don't need to. I don't need any of that. The point is, she was confident, firm in her relationship with her dad, and secure in his, her love, his love. He was, she was established in it. We become like this in our faith when we study the words, when we ask questions, when we meditate on it. You know, when we uh, we'll go through things together in the Bible uh, with the church, when we are together with the body putting it all into practice, living it out. There is confidence in knowing. It means we're not easily led astray 
when the false teachers come, no matter how clever their arguments may sound. Paul talks about being overflowing with thankfulness. Like a river flooding its banks, the Colossian believers are to be the same with gratitude and thankfulness. It's a sign of spiritual maturity and growth which comes from being built up in Christ. Understanding all that Christ has accomplished will bring us to this place of gratitude and a thankful joy, a focus on all that he has done. Sometimes for me, the busyness of life can get on top of me and I can, I can lose focus on what's important. Now, it could, it could be something as little as getting an email at the end of the day that might put my nose out of joint or a little niggly comment made in the office. And I, as I come home, and I'm, I'm chewing over, I just can't shake it off. Yet, I come home and I'll see my kids playing or, or running up to me with a big grin and open arms and I delight in them. And it refocuses my perspective on what matters. I'm thankful that they're, they're happy and well. And in a similar way, thankfulness does for that for our relationship with God. It takes our focus off things which can distract us or rob us of peace. And we're just saying, God, I thank you. I'm focused on you and all the good things that, you, that you've done and everything about you. A mature understanding of the truth will bring a believer to a place of thankfulness, a strong, firm faith, a deep rooting in Christ, and a bit quality build on the foundation laid in our lives. This will enable the believer to see the falsehood and the deception in any fine-sounding arguments and reject them. And after all, if we truly understand and know Christ and everything we have in him, why would we even consider looking elsewhere? We will see for ourselves that there's no need to add anything to Christ or replace him because he is completely sufficient and we are complete in him. I'd like to move on now to the second point, false philosophy. Paul's warning is, do not be taken captive by false teaching, which is hollow and deceptive and based on human tradition and elemental spiritual forces of this world. And that's tied into the Gnostic belief in heavenly bodies that supposedly influence the affairs of people on earth. What these false teachers, however, are claiming to be a higher level of understanding, Paul merely describes as basic principles. These deceptions can cause us to be taken captive, held against our will, unable to progress and grow in the freedom that we would have in Christ. It would seek to rob us and cheat us of that fullness and re-enslave us to tradition, ritual and legalist practices which we have been set free from. The Holy Spirit will guide us in these things, but a good test is this. Anything that does not acknowledge that Christ was fully God and fully man, or anything that claims to be an addition or a replacement for, who, for Jesus Christ, his person, or what he's accomplished, is, is false philosophy. It's fake news. The promises, their promises and claims are hollow and empty and serve only to lead the believer astray from the truth. If we are established in the truth, we will not be led astray. It is those ignorant of, Christian, of the truth that are going to be susceptible. susceptible. Part three, being alive in Christ. Now, in the passage where it talks about we have received the full, we are, we are made full, um, in verse 10. Uh, that's right. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. The, the Greek word here is pleroma, which is filling or being full. And it's interesting because it would have different connotations for the, for the Gnostic uh, teachers and, and the Christians. For the Gnostics, Pleroma would have referred to the spiritual universe as the dwelling place of God and of the, the totality of all the divine powers and emanations that they, they seek to connect with. But for, for Christians, it's, it's the total or the fullness of the Godhead which dwells in Christ. It's a continual permanent dwelling, not a one-off and not a past historical event. The truth is, in Jesus, all the fullness of the Godhead, all of God lives is, is in Jesus. And we have been brought to that fullness in Christ, spiritual completeness and perfection. There will be those who claim to have the secrets to refine Christianity and complete it. But we don't need that because we are already complete in Christ. Gnostic belief that matter is evil 
is refuted in that the fullness of God dwelled within Jesus Christ, who had a physical body, and that, ascended, and that body ascended into heaven. There cannot be any doubt that the mat- to believe matter is evil of itself is incorrect. Paul then goes on to talk about spiritual circumcision as opposed to the, one, the physical one of the Old Testament. Physical circumcision had a place in the Old Testament, um, the Old Covenant. Um, it identified the Israelites as God's chosen people and a part of that covenant. Part of that op- identification meant an obligation to fulfill the law of Moses, a law which Peter describes in Acts as a yoke that even the, the Jewish people could never bear and one they shouldn't impose on the Gentiles. A, a physical circumcision therefore profits little if we are unable to fulfill the requirements of that law. But Jesus has come now, and we who believe in him are under a new covenant. We are identified as his by a different circumcision, a spiritual one. And what does that mean? Well, think of it as heart surgery. Rather than an outward sign of identification, with no power to change us from within, we have had heart surgery which does have that power to change us. We are identified with Jesus and part of his body of which he is the head. If we are identified as Christ because of this spiritual circumcision, we are also identified in his death, buried with him in baptism and raised to life again because of our faith in the working of God. In our uncircumcised state, we were dead in our sins. But God has made us alive with Christ. We put off our old sinful natures uh, that we were enslaved to obey. And the debt of sin, which would have otherwise condemned us to spiritual death, was taken away from us and nailed to the cross. It was cancelled. And that's only possible because of the blood shed by Jesus on that cross. He paid the debt. In a human court, a person who has committed a crime cannot be allowed to just go free by the judge because this would weaken the law and would not provide justice to those who have been wronged. And in the same way, it's true of God's righteous law. But he fulfilled that requirement of the law through his death on the cross. And it means we are no longer under under the law, but under God's grace, Romans 6.14. We are also free to obey God and live for him out of a place of loving obedience rather than fear and bondage. Finally, Christ has disarmed the powers and authorities and made a public spectacle of them. These powers, what are they? It's Satan and his demonic principalities. Their authority has been restricted and they no longer hold that authority over those who belong to Christ Jesus. So moving on to part four, free from law. In view of all this, that let's not allow people to put any yoke of legalism on us, keeping traditions, rituals and practices in the, that vain hope that they will save us or make us more spiritual. Legalism will say, you can be made complete by observing tradition and ritual. But Christ says, you are made complete by faith in the working of God that raised me from the dead. Eating certain foods, observing certain festivals, all a shadow of the reality that has now come in Christ. In the Old Testament, the Jewish people did have to follow certain restrictions and observe those rituals, and they were right for the time. However, now Jesus has come with a new covenant, and he says that it's not what goes in, it's not what we eat, but it's what that comes out that defiles us. In other words, abstaining from certain food um, to follow that the old law is not going to affect that change in, in our lives from within us. Only Christ will do that. Human nature is attracted to legalism and, and religious duties. And I think that's because it's, it's, it's tempting to, it's a tangible way of measuring how, we're suppo- how holy we supposedly are. It's also quite handy to compare ourselves to others. It gives an appearance of wisdom and knowledge, but the word of God is clear. We are justified by faith. We are saved by grace not by works, lest anyone should boast. Galatians describes the law as our tutor or our guardian, preparing us for the coming of Jesus. It showed us what was good and holy. It showed us God's standard. And it also showed us that we weren't able to meet it. The law had no saving power in itself. But when Jesus came and we became his God's children by faith, 
We no longer required this tutor or this guardian. We now have Jesus and we no longer need that law. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. And that's in Hebrews chapter 10. Um, so you can read verses 16 to 23 for yourself. For time, I'm just going to make a, a comment as follows. Um, it talks about those who worship angels and, and have false humility. Don't let those disqualify you. Now, the angel worship um, is, you know, people who are supposedly talking to angels as a way of, of reaching God. The false humility aspect of it is where they, were, they would say things like, I'm, I'm not worthy to, to talk to God. I'll start with one of the angels instead. And, but rather than, that's not really, they, they then go into all this detail of these grand visions they've seen, idle notions Paul dismisses it as, because that's all it is. They've been disconnected. Truth is, they thought they were better than everyone else because of these visions. But the reality is, they've been disconnected from the head, which is Christ, and from which the whole body is connected to. If they're not connected to the head, they're not able to grow spiritually. We can only grow in God if we are part of the, his, of, of the body. This angel worship sought to undermine Christ's preeminence, his, his all-sufficiency, the fact he is first um, over all things, again, by relegating him to just one of many ways to God. It attempts to rob Jesus of his rightful place in the life of the believer. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus, which is John chapter 14. Not only is angel worship sinful and opening the door to demonic activity, it is wholly, in wholly incorrect and does not align with the truth of God's word. After all, Christ has made a spectacle of this, these elemental spiritual forces. He has demonstrated his victory over all these powers. Angel worship is entirely futile. Warren Wiersbe said in one of his commentaries, it is worth noting a true spiritual experience with God leads to submission and service. A striking contrast then to the fruit of the false teachers and their mystic practices. Another um, uh, false um, practice that Paul addresses is that of the belief that the human body is evil and, and people sought to address that by practicing severe self-discipline and denying, denying themselves um, as, a, as a way of attaining that higher spirituality. But this is all based upon man-made regulation and to do with things that are going to perish. It had no spiritual value and it couldn't change the heart. It is God who works in us to will and to do for his good purpose, Philippians 2, verse 13. He puts a desire in us to live for him and then enables us to go and do it. A few comments then to kind of look at how this would apply to us today. I don't know about you, but I, I feel like in today's culture, there always seems to be new ways of, of living that promise happiness and contentment. Maybe a diet, it could be a philosophy, a new way of thinking or seeking experiences. We should be aware of anything that seeks to dethrone Christ in our lives. Anything that can lead us away from him or capture us into false belief that we can earn um, salvation or we can refine and complete our faith by doing X, Y, Z. We should evaluate all things against the truth and the reality that we have in Christ. Say you had a print of the Mona Lisa hanging up at home. You'd look at it, enjoy it. You probably bought it off Amazon, I imagine. Um, other, sh other shops are available, I'm sure. Um, but there may become a time where you grow tired of it and bored of it. After all, it's just a copy, and you may take it off the wall and replace it with something else. But what if I said, what if, suppose you had the real thing? Suppose you had the real Mona Lisa hanging up at home, the masterpiece. I suspect we would all understand its value and significance and treat it with the due care and attention it really deserved and certainly wouldn't be hiding it in the loft out of the way. If we understand the worth and significance of something, we will look after it so much more and give it the due care, respect and attention. And it's the same with our faith in Christ. We've got something much more than a painting. We've got completeness and fullness in God, in Christ our, our Lord. And it's something we really should be deepening in. Not, not out of duty, not because we have to, but because God is Christ, Jesus is everything. He is the all-sufficient Savior. We don't need anyone else. If you have found Christ, you have found the one. 
You have found the one. Don't go looking elsewhere. I'd like to conclude by just saying a few things and then we'll pray. This world may offer all sorts of routes to fulfillment and completeness, but the only true way is Jesus Christ. We do not need to add any experience or secret teaching to Jesus. He is all sufficient and in him the fullness of God dwells. As we are built up in Christ, growing and maturing, we will see that things are false for what they are and we will not be led astray. We are alive in Christ. We share in his death, his resurrection and his life. Christ has set us free from the old law. We are under grace and free to obey God and, pro- and please him out of love. And let's pray. Father, I want to thank you so much that everything you've done. I want to thank you for you know, reconciling us to you. Jesus, I thank you that you, we, we are in you and we are complete in you. And I want to pray for, for us as a church that we would, we would not be led astray. We would not be turned to the left or the right. We would be focused on the truth in you. We would be know that in you, Jesus, we are brought to fullness. Because in you, the fullness of God dwells. I pray we'd get our heads around this truth and that our lives would be based on it and that we'd grow as you always intended us to. And I ask for these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's respond now as we worship together, as we sing the goodness of God. Love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life
Thank you, Carl, and to your wife for leading us in worship this morning. We've been really blessed in both accounts. And just to say the Zoom meeting will be following this. Um, it's now, um, I can't see the time on the clock. Oh, just coming up to 12. So I guess it'll be around about five past, 10 past 12, the next uh, the Zoom meeting. For the details of that, if you go onto the CFC uh, private group page, you'll see the details there for that if you want to join. Now, just to say that uh, coming up next week, uh, we're very uh, privileged to have uh, Kingdom Living Ministries with us. Lauren Crook is going to come and be speaking about prophecy. And uh, the, she is uh, going to be recording this week, so we'll have the message with us. But also, in the Zoom meeting afterwards, she's going to be bringing part of the team um, to actually prophetically speak into some people's lives. So it's going to be quite different next week. Um, so brace yourselves. Uh, we want to keep um, things fresh and we're looking at new things that we can do as we go along. So that is for next Sunday. And future notice, um, actually before I move on from that, just to say that actually Kingdom Living Ministries, um, they are also starting a prophetic um, ministry modular course and it's this Thursday evening. Um, 6.30 to 9.30, and it's every Thursday evening till the 11th of June. If you're interested in that, if you go to their website, the KLM uh, website, you will find more details. If you struggle with that in any way, then make contact with me and I can help you. Just to say, on the Saturday the 30th of this month, we're going to have another quiz night. I've had a number of requests from you because due to the success that we had of the last one. So, um, watch out for this space. Richard has been preparing and has got a few rounds already prepared. Um, and tell your friends, tell your neighbours, this is a great opportunity to get together with people and have some good fun and uh, an enjoyable evening together. So that's on Saturday the 30th of May. Okay, well that reminds, all that um, remains for me to do is to wrap up today by saying that it's been lovely having you with us and where you are in your homes. Uh, it's been, I'm um, sure, exciting watching the service. But let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity to meet together through computer, through media, and to be able to communicate with one another. And Lord, I want to pray that your blessing of the word that you've given, of the worship that we have given to you this morning, We'll exalt your name. We'll lift up your name. So, Father, bless every family that's been uh, plugged into us, logged into us this morning. May the Spirit of God be alive in every household. And as we go through this time together, may we hold on to you. You are the most important part of our life. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And we acknowledge you as Lord right now. Be with us, Holy Spirit, and watch over us, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So see you again next week um, for the service, but in about 15 minutes uh, on the Zoom as we have some questions and have some fellowship together.